Hello and welcome to today's video in which we're going to look a little bit more close at the get and put block. If you want to know how those blocks work, check out my channel. I made a video on each of those previously, so I'm not going to look at exactly how you put them in your program and what to put where. This time it's more to getting to know them a little bit more. Um, yeah, not how they work, not how to make them work, but some details. Um, this push button here is my request, right? Whenever I press the push button, you see I'm actually getting data from the other PLC. I am using here the get block as example. The put block works the same way, right? We have to obey the same rules. So I press the button, you see both data here get to our PLC. First detail, first detail that we need is the following. Always pay attention that those have the same length. If I have a word three, which is 16 or uh, 24 bit, no, wait. 32 something, a lot of bit, it's three word, <laughs> uh, three times 16, 48, 48 bit and uh, 32 bit, those have a different length, right? So this won't work anymore, right? Those values are not, uh, not, well, not get, we don't get those values anymore from the other PLC because those have different length. You can do, everything if you have the same length. If I take, for example, one word I wanna read and I say I read it into an int, right? Into one int, a word is 16 bit and int is 16 bit, this will work. So we are really looking at the bit level here. It's, it's really about pushing bit around. So this is just one word, so uh, I only read the first here. You see it? I only read the first. If I want to read both, I will have to say this is two, this is, uh, no, this is one word, this is two more word, I would have to say three. If I say three word, I will read both. Because they're right next to each other, right? They're right next to each other. It's zero, one, two, three, four, five in this case. They are right next to each other. This will work whenever I press the button. Good. <clears throat> which leads to a problem, which leads to a big problem to the following. If I have which I always recommend, right? Which I always recommend. Instead of those variables here in the uh, tag table in my memory area, right? In my memory area. We usually don't put stuff nowadays just in memory areas. What do we do? We make data blocks, right? I will make a new data block. Uh, we'll call it read data block here, whatever, right? And I want the same two things in there you will already see one problem, right? The problem here is inside this data block, I do not have addresses. You see, there's no addresses because we're using optimized block access. I will make a video the next time about optimized block access, what exactly that means, but we don't have it here. We do not have addresses because of that, because our program is actually better. And right? that's a small problem we have here. How do I deal with this? I cannot, well, I, I can drag and drop this here, right? But only a single one. I can take this integer and I can say, hey, read in here. And you see, nothing is read. It's okay. The problem right now is this integer has a length of one integer. So I can only read one word, which will work. So let's check this out. Let's download, right? Let's finish. It won't work right now. Why won't it work? Because I still want to read three right? Won't work. If I want to only read one, let's see. Now it's the same length. This is fine again. This is fine. Hopefully I haven't tested it. Uh, I'm making assumptions here. Ah, it's fine. It's fine, right? That's the problem. I cannot get the length here. If I now want to have this real number, as, if I want to have the real number here, I will have to replace it, right? I will have to replace. I will have to put this here and I will have to say, hey, which area was this in the memory here? It starts with uh, 2.0 and it is actually two word. Or I can also say it's one real, which is the same length, right? It's, um, here we go. Yeah. <clears throat> here we go, this will work, right? This will work but only for the second one here. That's a little bit annoying. This is a little bit annoying. What we can do, 
there's several ways now if you want to read both. The first and the correct way, the good way right now would be the following. You have your block here and you have this little arrow. Do you see the little arrow here on the bottom? Boop. And you see, ah, I now have different areas that I can read. So if you want to read more than one value, here's what you do. You have the second one I want to read in here. And for the second one, I will also give this area, which, whoops, uh, starts but zero, zero. You need to know the addresses on the other PLC. We'll get to that in a moment. And this is int one. So if I want to read more than one data, I will have to do something like this. This is why the read, uh, why the get and put blocks, why they actually support more than one input. They have four inputs that you can use, right? For addresses and for read inputs. <clears throat> yeah, this is how you could do it. I could add a third one and the fourth one. If I have more, I can get a second get block. I can always do that. So no problem at all. Now on the other side, on the other side, I would have a problem if this stuff here, those variables right now, if we look and it's not this PLC here anymore, this is gone, right? It is in the second PLC we have it, in the one we want to get data from. We have this in our memory area, right? We have this in our memory, which is not the standard case. As I just said, it's not the standard case. We want this actually in, our, in a data block. So let me get the data block. Uh, get data from here and I again will make the same structure here and you will see I've got the same structure I will give them start values because they won't change I haven't written a program uh, 20 point three or something like this right so I've got this and now I want to read this data the problem is this is the second PLC I, let's get go back to the program of the first PLC. Here I have my first PLC. I cannot do the following. I cannot just drag and drop here. It will be an unknown variable. You see the red line, uh, very hard to see. It will be an unknown variable because it's not from this PLC. What we have to do is this, the get and put block on the read side. So on your local side of your PLC, what, wherever you want to save the data in your PLC or when you, where you want to get the data from your PLC. So in my case, PLC one here. Um, this you can make optimized, right? You can just pull a variable there and put it there and let it sit there. That's what I did in the optimized way with the variable name. With the, um, with the counterpart, with the partnered PLC, you cannot do that. You have to use an address, right? You have to use an address, which is a little bit strange, right? Um, because our block here, this block here, it doesn't have addresses. It does not have addresses. So how do I access this block? I will get to this topic the next time. For now, to get to the addresses here, you can right click on the block properties and there's an attribute called optimized block access. I will explain the next time what that is. We can deactivate this. It will give us a warning, right? Yeah, I will say, okay. And now you see my block here actually now has this offset column. Do you see it? Right now it's dot, dot, dot. If I go to my PLC and I compile it once, you will see now I have addresses. Now we have addresses in this data block. So that's good. That's, that, that, that's something we can work with. Um, so right now what we can do is we can go there and we can say data block, what's the number? 1.dbx for data block bit, 0, 0.0. And we have a length of, what was it, 1 int? int one so now i can do that uh the specified do i have to put the p in before i think so here we go <clears throat> so this i can do right let's take this and also put it here uh, db1 dbx 2.0 which is the start here right it's 2.0 this is where my second variable starts and it is a real and it's also one Right. This I can do. Now I need to download both because I made changes on both. This might take a moment. So this we can do to use data blocks when having a get and put. Right. Um, here we go. And whenever I press the boot button, read data block here. So I go online here. Whenever I press the button, you see 
I'm getting the data from the data block and putting it also in my data block. You see, this data block here that I'm reading into, so the one on my local PLC does not have to be optimized because I can just put the variables here, right? It does not need to be optimized. The other PLC, this is how the get and put works. They need, they are pointing. It's called a pointer. They are pointing in an area, so they need an address. So on the other side, the other PLC, if you want to use data blocks, you have to deactivate this optimized block access and then your variables will have an address. Whatever that means, I will get to uh, optimize block access uh, the next time around, but this is how you can use data blocks with your get and put block. There's no other way. The second PLC, the partner PLC, has to have the optimized block access deactivated. Right? I still recommend, if you want to use a get and put block, I still recommend doing it in that way. Um, what we could also do right now, which I have not tested, but let's just see if that works. Um, yeah, no, let's not, let's not, let's not play around too much. This is how it works. This is how you should do it. You have four address thingies. So if I want to read two more, I will just put them in here, All right? If you have more data, you can also use this and say, hey, real uh, 50, right? Which is now a really, really big amount of bits. And But the thing is, this one here right now would also have to have a length of 50, um, of 50 double word actually right now, because real is a double word. So it needs to be very, very, very long. I always recommend just reading each and every variable like this so that this is exactly this it's one variable you work with it if you need more than four just get a second get block my recommendation good that's already been 12 minutes a little bit details on those blocks right and which which bits which bytes which addresses those are address based on the de on the other side they're always address based for the get block i'm talking about the rd and for the uh, put block I'm talking about the SD, right? This is this can be uh, this can be used in the optimized way, the SD and RD because this is local, and the address that's called address, right? And the address for the partner CPU has to be unoptimized. It has to be a standard block, a so-called. You can either use then memory bits uh, or also data blocks, but and but you have to make them unoptimized or standard. Good. I will get to this uh, this button here a little bit more in another video because it's quite important. But for now, you can deactivate it and it, it will be fine. Everything will be fine. Hopefully. Probably. Not guaranteed. Not guaranteed, but should be. If you've got any questions, just leave them in the comments below. There's been quite a lot the last uh, time, so I can't get to all of them, but give it a try. I, I hope I can. Don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.